uh, ladies and gentlemen. Um, before I start, I'd like to address the allegations that were made for me on the earlier session from Duncan Brown. Um, however, I can't because I will have to admit that uh, that email was one of the last I sent before going to Bali for a month on my honeymoon, and I really dropped him in it. So, Duncan, Rachel, I am sorry, but I would do it again. So, um, Historic England Archive are the proud guardians of about 4 million aerial photographs taken by various predecessor organisations, uh, the REF, other commercial uh, bodies who are engaged in the perilous and uh, sometimes pro profitable photography from the air. So, uh, this is uh, one of the pilots who uh, took a spare pair of brogues and two bottles of wine wherever he flew, just in case he crashed. So, Historic England have made a massive investment ensuring that our collections are kept in the best conditions. We keep our, our aerial photography at six degrees in a secure environment, and it is exemplary. We care about what we have been entrusted with. So what does this collection look like? And this is a photograph of the archive which sits behind our main building in Swindon. So what does the collection look like? Well, firstly, it's a vast number of tin cans. Uh, this is one aisle of very many that we have within the archive. Now, um, these tin cans are also archaeological artifacts. And the reason I say that is because they have graffiti on them from the pilots who took the photographs. So we keep some of these. Uh, we are moving over to plastic where the, some of the metal has, has, has corroded. But actually, there is in the, 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 for me, the tins are as interesting as what's inside. Uh, and this is what a, uh, a negative would look like. Um, they're quite fragile. Obviously, they're rolled up. We also have a whole series of photographs in albums, and I'm sure you'll be familiar with this concept, but you can see that uh, these are relatively flat, but we also have prints which are not in albums and they have started to curl. So to give you an idea of some of the content, we also have digital, which is coming through on a daily basis from our flyers. So I thought, given that I was at the IFA conference, I would put a Spot the Archaeology one in. Um, so this is in Stan Lake, which is near my old stomping ground of Oxford. And um, I, I'm a sort of retired archaeologist, so I'm not even going to tell you what's on there. But I'm sure most of you can spot at least three different periods of archaeology. Um, I have no idea where this is, but contractually, working for Historic England, I have to mention this pile of stones somewhere in Wiltshire. Uh, so we have two forms of aerial photography, the oblique that I've just shown you and the vertical. Um, the vertical is from uh, REF 1934 onwards, uh, really nice resolution, uh, quite a lot overlapping. Um, and you can see this is some bomb damage, uh, so we get quite a lot of... We did this fantastic open day in Swindon um, before Christmas, and we had some photographs of Swindon, and uh, a member of the public came up and said, oh, we used to play in that building that was bombed. And we went, what building? And we kind of, we had this huge poster, but she was able to identify bomb damage, which we could then add to the archive and say, here's bomb damage here. So public help on some of these is vital. This is what happens when aerial photography doesn't last. So, um, this material will eventually disappear. It is not, it is stable, but it isn't entirely stable. And we lose a little bit every year. Despite our best practices, we lose a little bit every year. And it will be, whether that will be before the zombie apocalypse or after the zombie apocalypse, 
there will be no aerial photography left in 200, 300 years. Now, my team are probably going to shout at me and say that's not true. But the cost of keeping a building at six degrees, the cost of and maintaining that not only is quite expensive and has been massively expensive over the last year, but also it's environmentally ruinous. So, for example, the Welsh Commission are looking at freezing some of their material, but this is a real problem and will continue to be a real problem. So, there are two ways of seeing this material. The first one is to arrange a visit to Swindon, and this was last year before last, or, and come and sit down in our viewing room, free of charge, we will get the material out for you and you can have a look at it. Or you could ask a member of the team to digitise the photographs you wanted, we would then charge you for that service, and then you would be able to look at them. So um, we have been working for the last decade on a project to make digital material available. Um, and it has been a massive struggle. Uh, there are three kind of issues with this. The first one is money. The second one is uh, digital knowledge. Um, and the third one was, and I can't remember what the third one was. I had it yesterday, I had three. Today I've only got two. When I remember the third one, so money, technology, and technologically literate staff. So... Those three things combined make it incredibly difficult. But we persisted, and we persisted, and we persisted, and eventually, uh, using this project, which was funded by the Heritage Lottery Fund, which was Britain from above, which was a tri-nations project, we got to the point where we could launch Apex. Now, Apex is an online system. Okay. So this is Britain from above. So really nice photographs. Am I pointing in the wrong direction? So this is the point where we are able to launch Apex. So Apex is geographically based, duh, how else would you search for aerial photography, which shows you the photographs that we have digitized and made available. So online, free of charge, you can have a look at them, you can zoom in. It, when we launched it, it went absolutely crazy in terms of the number of people that came to the website. It was the most uh, used part of the website for three or four months. It blew everyone away. We were all, all the nationals. And it was a real validation because a lot of us have been working on this project for a very long time to get this material. We knew that archaeologists, we knew that our customers and general public desperately wanted to see this material. So, hooray for us. This was fantastic. Um, and as I said, we got some amazing uh, coverage in the press. We, were, we had the privilege of, you know, kind of these are amazing photographs. So, um, I want to talk about the elephant in the room. This is an illustration showing all the aerial photographs that we have for a small slice of the country okay that's every single one this is the ones that we have available for you to view online so i'll go back to the original no i won't how do i go backwards no can we go backwards thank you so you can see the difference between the two so this is an enormous amount of material. We know this material is in our archive, but no one can see it. So I guess one of the challenges for me is, why are we keeping this stuff if no one can see it? And that applies to a, quite a lot of our thought processes. Why are we paying enormous amount of money to keep this? Well, we know that this stuff is really important. As I said at the start of the, you know, the title of the presentation is about climate change. It is about looking for providing resources for archaeologists to view landscape change. Um, David Attenborough said that this, this aerial collection was one of the biggest collections predating satellite photography. It, was, it is a fantastic collection that can chart landscape and climate change, and yet we can't get it online. 
So to give you an idea of the challenge we face, to digitise the coasts of England, which is a project that I'm working on at the moment, that's 32,000, just over 32,000 photographs, will cost around £800,000 to digitise because you need specialists who can get the material out. You have, to, uh, you have to flatten the material, then you have to digitise it, and then we have to put it in a place where it will maintain. To digitise the whole collection, it's eight to 10 million pounds. This is a massive amount of money and obviously very labour intensive. So I'm going to be sending around the bucket. So if you could all just put some money in. So that's where we are. Our customers can see, the pub, general public can see a lot of these photographs, but we get at least one email a week saying, oh, that, my, my house is, is next door to the photograph you've digitised. Can you kind of, when are you going to be digitising the next one? And we slowly digitise things as people pay for it. And we have little sprints where we spend an afternoon digitising more material. But we do not have the capacity or the budget to be able to digitise any more. And I think I've calculated at current rates is about 285 years before we've digitised this collection. So we are reliant on other fundraising initiatives to get that process. And that's where we are at the moment. I haven't really got a conclusion other than you know, getting the digital really gave us an impetus to kind of look at what we were holding and how we can get it online. So thank you.